on question number eight. This is one of those backwards questions. Again, I want to, I'm given the solutions this time, like I was done in number seven. Now I want to write the absolute value equation. So it's backwards of number seven. So first off, I want to find what is in the middle between negative one and a half and positive one and a half. Well, the middle of that one would be zero, wouldn't it? Because zero is exactly in the middle. And then it's one and a half to each side, isn't it? To each number. So it'll be x, the absolute value of x minus zero equals one and a, and a half. I can simplify that a tad. I don't like to put x minus zero. I can just put x. So I'm going to say, oh, the absolute value of x equals one and a half. And there's your answer for that one. Now let's take a look at number nine. Notice my left point is at negative two and a half. My right point is at three and a half. So my middle is not going to be uh, zero, is it? So to find the middle, I want to find the average of those two numbers. So I take negative 2.5 plus 3.5, and I'll divide it by two. Well, that's one divided by two, isn't it? So my middle is one half. Now how far is it from one and a half from one half to three and a half? Well that'd be three, wouldn't it? So I'm we'll say, oh, the absolute value of x minus one half equals three. Oh, I had the answer there for you, didn't I? Didn't have to write it out, but wrote it out anyway. Okay, for questions 10 through 14, this is one of these always sometimes or never problems. So let's start up here. Now the absolute value of x plus 1 is greater than 0. Well, that would seem to be true, except when x is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 would be 0. So that answer is sometimes. The solution of x plus c is greater than 0. The problem is, if c would be positive then I'd have to subtract C from both sides, and X would be a negative. So that is sometimes also. And the same thing for number 12. If C was positive, I'd move it to the other side, and it'd be impossible. I wouldn't have a solution. Now, the last one seems like it should be something other than sometimes, because I know absolute value is positive. If I add something onto there. But what happens if x and c are opposite to each other? Then it would be 0. And then I'd have a problem because it wouldn't be greater than 0. Kind of a trick question would pull on you here, didn't I? Because I gave you four questions. They're all sometimes. None of them. That wasn't very nice of me. Should have had at least an always or never in there. Okay, question 15. To explain why an absolute value can't be negative, remember, absolute value, the key I'm looking for in your answer is you have to have the words distance from zero or magnitude from our seminar. Magnitude is always positive, so distance can't be a negative number.